I literally have never understood why people like to dance at raves or clubs until that experience. Because between the molly and the shrooms and everything else, I was just feeling the music so hard. And I came up with dance moves I didn't even know I had in me. It was, it was insane. And like, that stuck with me. You know what I mean? I'm Yuki, joined by my co-host Reggie, and you're listening to Modern Day Hippie the podcast about doing drugs in a responsible, fun, and safe way to improve your life. Before we jump into today's episode, a quick legal disclaimer. This podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Our goal is to educate and inform others about the realities of substance use in an engaging format. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to attempt to recreate anything found in this episode or any of our other content. We are not confessing to any acts stated in this podcast. The content in this episode should not be treated as factual or real in any way. Now, with that, we hope you enjoy today's show. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Modern Day Hippie, the podcast where we teach you to do drugs in a responsible, useful, and fun way. I'm your host, Reggie. And I am your co-host, Yuki. And today, we're going to be talking about doing drugs at concerts and music festivals. But before we jump into that, Yuki... Any cool experiences that you've had lately? Yeah. So actually this past weekend, I, I did go to one of my favorite music festivals that I've ever been to. Uh, it's one that I've been to a couple of times, uh, pretty pretty local to my area. And so it just happened uh, this past weekend and had some very memorable experiences, uh, very much drug related, uh, and also had a few dud uh, experiences with drugs. So can talk about both sides of that but overall it was super positive and i'm i've created some great memories and looking forward to already going back to the festival next year that's awesome and what do you mean by dud by the way yeah so uh, there are certain times when you know you take a drug expecting a effect and it just never seems to happen uh sometimes it might just be because the drug like lost its potency or something like that but it could also just be that you've done too many drugs in short a period of time that the drug like no longer affects you or or hits you the same. And so I think that was very much the experience that I had. So for example, on the second day of the festival, my girlfriend and I each took a tap of acid and we were really looking forward to it because we hadn't tripped on, on LSD for a while and it just never seemed to, to quite hit us. And so I'm wondering if that was a result of also doing shrooms the day before doing drugs pretty much throughout the prior like 24 to 36 hours and if that numbed the effects of it and then on sunday we also took uh what was supposed to be our first time doing like a full dose of 2cb which is a little bit more of like a rare kind of research uh synthetic psychedelic that i'd heard really good things about but that also didn't hit us very hard which is interesting so we're going to take a little bit of a break from drugs and then just try the 2CB by itself and see if it, uh, if it hits us like it's supposed to. But aside from that, um, because we did have copious amounts of some other drugs such as uh, ketamine, Coke, 2C, uh, we had some really, really great music related experiences. So one of the headliners on Saturday, uh, we just had like the perfect combination of drugs in us, mostly because we did a really fat bump of 2C right before and pretty much the entire hour long set, like I was in outer space. Literally, I was dissociated from my body. I was not aware that my body existed. And the music was so freaking good. Like the music and the timing of the drugs and even the memories that the music brought up for me from earlier in my life just fit so perfectly that it created what almost felt like a once in a lifetime concert experience where it seriously blew my mind like i for 10 or 15 minutes of the show i was literally crying like tears of joy like it was one of the most (laughs) beautiful things that i've ever seen uh and that's what i call like uh, a a tattoo worthy show where it's so memorable that if if you wanted to you could get a tattoo of it and i feel like it would be uh you know pretty pretty reasonable thing to do uh to commemorate that event so that was very much the high. Uh, and then the duds with the drugs was not a huge deal, uh, but maybe you need to take a little bit of a break from doing drugs and give it like a week or two uh, until we try some of them on their own, especially because when we tried the 2CB, uh, it was already mixing it with some ketamine, and some 2C and, and whatever else we had that day. Yeah, it'll be hard to know what the 2CB feels like if that was your first time. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and honestly, the only reason why I even risked stacking it with other drugs uh, was because I knew that it was something that was supposed to be a little bit more mellow and subtle. And so I thought it would work pretty well with some of the other drugs that we were doing. Uh, but definitely like, you know, back to our rule of the first time you do a drug, doing it by itself. Like part of that is for safety, but a big part of that is also just so you can experience the drug on its own and see what it's supposed to feel like. Because then when you do it in the future, you can kind of look out for those, those signals, those feelings that you get on that specific substance. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And I was going to ask, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no. And actually, uh, my, my experience this weekend was the, uh, the inspiration for talking about uh, today's topic on the episode about taking drugs at music festivals, concerts, raves, uh, which I feel like a lot of people tend to associate with doing drugs in general. And for quite a few people that I've met, their first encounter with drugs is either directly like at a concert through someone that they meet there, or it's around a concert experience. Like the first time they roll, it'll be like at a specific show of an artist that they really want to see. So excited to talk a little bit more about this. Yeah, dude, before we dive more into that, I guess I did want to ask you, uh, was your girlfriend on the same stuff as you, I guess? For the most part, yeah. So we took everything the same, uh, except I took a little bit more uh, ketamine. And that was, I really enjoyed it. And actually one of the nights, I think it was Saturday night, we were kind of just post gaming, like at our apartment with some friends after the concert. Cause we were like pretty dead and tired. We literally just put on like some pretty lights in our living room, uh, turned out like all of the normal lights and like watch planet earth. And we like people are doing a bunch of like two C and Coke. And I think it was my first time actually doing just ketamine by itself. And I really enjoyed just doing it like at home. I was literally just wearing like sweatpants and a hoodie. I was so cozy and vibing so hard. And we were like blasting the music of the artists we had just listened to uh, while watching planet earth on, oh on silent. That's such and, like, a great the lights experience. behind my TV. It was, it was awesome. Like it was such a great time. That's awesome. Do yeah, you feel but, like being on that same wavelength as your girlfriend made you guys closer or anything? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say closer than we already are because we pretty much always do the same drugs together like on a very frequent basis i will say though during that contra experience that i talked about that was like truly a once in a lifetime experience i remember that i was with my girlfriend and one of our other friends and i distinctly remember like in the first like 10 or 15 minutes of the show where like i literally like was dissociated from my body and just like so like lost in the music uh, just turning to both my girlfriend and our friend and just being like, I hope you're on the same drugs that I'm on. I hope you're experiencing the same thing I am right now because it is like truly one of the most beautiful things I, I have ever seen and, and experienced in my life. And they were both like, yeah, yeah, we're Hell right there. Yeah. <laughs> and literally like after the show, um, I think there was one other artist that was playing for like another hour and we just sat on a hill like watching this artist from afar and just talking and, and reflecting about the show. And that was, it was really nice, like sharing that experience with the same feelings, because it definitely would have still been a fantastic show on different drugs or on, on no drugs at all. But the fact that we all had that same psychoactive experience while listening to this music that had a lot of meaning to all three of us was truly something special. And honestly, even because of how unique this artist was to me, and because I discovered their music when I was a good bit younger, like literally in, in grade school uh, that night, actually, instead of Ubering back from the festival, I walked, I think it was like the mile and a half back to my wow. apartment while everyone else took an Uber. Um, and part of it was because we had five people. It was easier for them to just do the four person Uber, but also like, I really wanted to take that time to almost just like reflect on those memories that had been brought up. I think like music has this really unique quality of being able to resurface memories that you maybe haven't had in a while and so with this artist specifically like i hadn't listened to their music in a while and seeing their show listening to their music in the state of mind that i was like literally on that whole walk back home i like made it a point for the first time in my life to think through like literally like where was i in my life in high school like what did i care about what motivated me uh, and just reflecting on that, like where I was then and where I am now. And I realized like I never 
taken the time to do basically like that kind of like thought exercise uh, and doing that coming out of that show and, and still kind of having the afterglow from a lot of these drugs and feeling amazing after the show was a really special experience for me as well. That's awesome, man. I feel like with in today's society, it's so hard to find time to kind of reflect like that or even have any of those moments. So it's awesome that you're able to do that. Yeah, honestly, I, you kind of have to like force yourself into it almost. Like I was like, I know I have this walk home. It's probably just going to be like 25, 30 minutes of walking. I don't really have a choice around it. Like sure, I could bail and call an Uber, but like that's lame. I just, I got this walk. There's nothing I can do to distract myself. I just put my phone in, in my backpack and it was just me and my thoughts. And, you know, my, my th- thoughts were definitely very active, especially coming down on some of the drugs. And it was a really, really great experience. Like I highly recommend if, if you have the time and the space to try some of these substances that we talk about and just use them to like, reflect on different parts of your life especially if it's something linked to to your past or experiences that you've had uh, can be a really productive and, and unique experience you're at the club and the music is thumping but you you've got nothing left in the tank so what do you do sniff some cacao yep you heard that right sniff some cacao it's the hottest new trend in the club and party scene one bum-sized sniff of raw chocolatey powder contains the caffeine equivalent to a half cup of coffee and boom it hits instantly And the best part is you can now sniff cacao anytime, anywhere, right out in the open, in front of the DJ booth or the stage, even at the VIP table with your friends. Now, how does that happen without drawing unwanted attention? Snowgo's spring-loaded bump straws make it possible. These classy, triple mirror polished bump straws are the safest, most discreet way to enjoy sniffing cacao. In fact, you've most likely already seen people wearing Snowgo's bump straws as pendants around their necks without even knowing it. Discover why sniffing cacao using Snowgo bump straws is being called the biggest revolution in partying since the invention of rock and roll. Jump on over to snowgostraws.com to learn more. That's S-N-O-G-O-S-T-R-A-W-S.com and use discount code MDH15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Yeah, so I guess transitioning to that topic what would you recommend in terms of the drugs to take out like a festival or a concert or something in terms of types of drugs yeah i think the most the two most common classes of drugs are uh, molly or ecstasy and then psychedelics Uh, i feel like those are the ones that are most like commonly looked at at concerts uh and then obviously a lot of people drink alcohol uh and also like people will bring weed in in various forms Uh, I would say between all of those, so the most go-to drug for these kinds of experiences is Molly. And the nice thing about Molly is that I think it's one of the few drugs where I could actually recommend to people that the first time they do it can be in like a concert setting, like where you're out in public, because as long as you don't take too much, like as long as you're taking one or two points, it's not going to completely alter your like state of mind. You're not going to get like visuals or have a trip. It really is just going to make you feel very happy and feel good. And as long as you're with a couple of people that you're comfortable with, I think it is a relatively safe substance to take for your first time at a concert. And honestly, that's the best time to like get the effects. It's like seeing it with music that you love um, as opposed to just doing it at like a random house party or at home. Like you can still have a good time with that. But I think Molly does pair very well with raves, music, lights, uh, and having that experience with with a group of your friends. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I never understood raves until I went to a rave on Molly. I was just like, holy shit, this is so different. <laughs> yeah, tell me, tell me more about that experience. Yeah, man. So uh, some friends and I went to this concert. And actually, I'm not going to lie, I was on a lot of drugs that night. We took, uh, honestly, not as much as you, you just were probably, but we took... We took like one square of those shrooms, those shrooms chocolates we were talking about before, and then uh, took three points of Molly and went to this concert, had an amazing time, like great visuals and feeling great and everything. And I think I think they call that, uh, I think that's hippie flipping, right? Shrooms and Molly, yeah. Yeah, shrooms and Molly is hippie flipping and then uh, acid and Molly is candy flipping. Yeah, so I thought... I thought that's all that we were going to do that night, right? But then after the concert, the concert was in the downtown of a city. And so afterwards, we were just kind of on this, just walked out to downtown. We're like, you know what? Like, 
let's go to a bar. Like, why not? We're already here, you know? And we ended up going, one of my boys, he was like, yeah, man, one of my, one of my boys is actually a bartender at this one bar. He said he could hook it up. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So we go to this, this bar, right? And I ended up not being like what we expected, to be honest. It ended up being a comedy club <laughs> and they were having a comedy show <laughs> and they almost didn't let us in because we were like clearly it's fucked so up, you know, but then we're like, oh no, dude, we're just boys with this guy. And he's like, oh dude, you're his boy. Why don't you just say so? They're just like, let us in. So we go in just to the bar area uh, and the show's going on like another section. And then, um, and then uh, my friend's friend was like, oh yeah, you guys want this blunt? Like I rolled it, but I'm not gonna really have a chance to smoke it. You guys can just smoke it uh in like the the patio area and we're like dude fuck yeah why not uh so we we end up uh we end up smoking this blunt with him uh he was like in and out like because he had to work but it was we were smoking this blunt he was in and out and then we took a few shots at that point we were feeling pretty good you know what i mean like we're like we hit like four drugs and then we also had like one of those vapes on us so that that's a bingo for us so i don't know if we talked about bingos on this podcast yet, I, I i don't think we have yet yeah, so uh, it's just kind of like a, a term that some of our friends coined where if you take five different drugs in a row, you hit a bingo. So we consider that a bingo because we did like uh, shrooms, molly, uh, weed, alcohol, and nicotine. Um, so it was fun. Then after, so the, the, cra- the, the story kind of starts to get crazy after that bar because that's the point when we're like super fucked up on like a bunch of drugs. And then we go to, this this club and it was kind of like a rave and i literally have never understood why people like to dance at raves or clubs clubs until that experience because between the molly and the shrooms and everything else i was just feeling the music so hard and i came up with dance moves i didn't even know i had in me it was it was insane and like that stuck with me you know what i mean like Uh, yeah. and the story gets, it's, it gets a little funnier because, um, uh, 2 AM hits and in that city that we were in, the bars typically closed, but that one club that we were at actually stayed open, uh, past 2 AM, but they stopped serving drinks and they have like these security people that go around with a flashlight and make sure that you put away like all your drinks, throw away all your drinks out at the 2 AM mark if you want to stay. So one of my friends, he saw them doing that and he's like, Oh dude, they must be closing. So he leaves and with the those kinds of places it's no re-entry after 2 a.m so once he left they wouldn't let him back in so we're like okay we'll all just leave um and then that's when one of our friends was like dude you know what's open right now and i'm like nothing that we can get into like what's up what's open and he's like the strip club bro (laughs) and man i almost regret going man (laughs) like i don't even want to get into the details but having two girls dancing on you when you're on that many drugs is just a different experience. Like, and don't get me wrong. I was like super respectful. I wasn't even like trying to do anything weird or anything like that. Uh, but just <laughs> talking to this, I remember talking to this stripper and I'm like, yeah. So like, you know, like what made you get into this? And she was like, Oh yeah. You know, I got this 12 year old son. And we had a whole like 10 minute conversation about her son. <laughs> she has no idea. Like I'm on shrooms and everything, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was it was pretty interesting experience. Pretty interesting night. Gotcha. What, what would you say that was a a positive experience at the strip club, or or would you have rather not not had that in the state of mind that you were in? Uh, I'd say definitely positive, okay. like one hundred percent positive. It was just I felt like I was making this random connection that like doesn't feel like our like my path would cross with that woman like ever. Like you know what I mean? And it it never has again since that night, which is what made it kind of a unique experience. And like, you know, you can kind of just be saying the dumbest shit and like, no one cares. Like, yeah, exactly. There, there is weirdly a level of comfort in talking to strangers, especially that have like no connection to you. Cause it's almost like nothing really matters when you're having those conversations. Like you can yeah. say whatever and it won't, it won't really change anything in your life. Yeah. Also, it's it's really interesting how different drugs in those same kind of like dancey rave settings can have like different effects. Because I know that when we were at that concert that I described as like once in a lifetime, I would say our effect from just doing like a really fat bump of 2C right before was a little bit more, felt a little bit more like the dissociative effect, uh, effects of, of ketamine, for example. And so it was really funny because I'm pretty sure like 
physically we weren't like dancing that aggressively. We were just kind of like head bumping, like going like that. So like physically, we probably didn't look like we were going crazy, but dude, mentally, like I have never gone that hard in my life. Like in my (laughs) head, I was like jamming out just like to the absolute 110% maximum. And I thought it was really hilarious that just by looking at us and our bodies, like you wouldn't be able to tell that. You'd probably just be like, oh, you know, these people like, they're vibing with the music, you know, they're enjoying it. But in our head, I'm like, we were all like, this is like one of the like, like top two best shows we've ever seen. <laughs> Dude, that's the best part that like with a lot of these drugs, unlike with like certain drugs, but a lot of the drugs that you did, a lot of people can't tell you're on them, which is hugely ad- advantageous socially, I'd say, because you know, you could still like walk home. No one's going to try to take advantage of the fact that you're on drugs. Like, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. And and a lot of these don't even last that long. Like we, we take most of these drugs right before the show. Say the show was about an hour. And then about an hour after that, we were we started feeling like pretty normal. Like obviously you're still kind of coming down. So that afterglow that we talk about, but you're totally fine, functional. You can have conversations. You could probably drive if you needed to. In our case, like we had absolutely no problems like walking out of the festival and getting an Uber home. So that was that that was nice as opposed to I know like when I've gone to the same festival in past years, the main substance I did was was drinking. And oh, <laughs> it is so tough to sustain that for an entire day for three days in a row. Like you want to keep yourself at that like optimal drunk level, which is really tough to do. By the end of the day, you're just fucking dead. Like getting home is an ordeal. And by the end of the three days, like you're just a zombie of your former self. And don't get me wrong. We were definitely like pretty tired going there on Sunday and coming back, which is definitely the case with the three day music festival. But like Sunday night, we felt like mentally fine. You know, we got home, we showered, we went to bed like relatively early that night. Um, and we're in like a, a good spot to get our week started on Monday morning with, with work and usual life things. And I definitely would not have felt nearly as capable as that had I been drinking any alcohol or even close to what I would be drinking in past years that I'd gone to this festival. Yeah, man. Dr- music festivals are definitely a marathon and not a sprint, especially when you're drinking. I remember in college, I went to the same music festival every year. And every year I'd buy a three-day pass. But none of the years I was able to actually go all three days because I was drinking every day and I just my body just like could not handle that many hours of drinking. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's also definitely important to, I think like be cognizant of like how you cycle the drugs that you're taking at these festivals. So I think part of the problem this past weekend was the fact that we took some form of psychedelics every day. And in reality, you should try to have at least one day in between to like let your brain reset from the psychedelics that's not necessarily something that you feel, but I do think that's why like the, the LSD and the 2CB might have felt like duds in our experience on Saturday and Sunday. And so I think the ideal thing is start with a psychedelic on like the first day, on the second day, roll or, or do something else. And on the third day, you can do the same psychedelic or another one just so you give those like different parts of your brain that are responsible for having those experiences um, a break and you don't get in a situation where like you take drugs and you're not really feeling them and you're like what's going on like why is this not hitting yeah dude the tolerance charts for psychedelics are like some of the most unique ones i think it's like the next day if you try to take a, the same psychedelic the next day after you took it the day before it like wouldn't even work almost unless you're like upping the dosage a lot yeah and it also made me realize with drugs in general because like this whole weekend like we were doing drugs the whole time like we'd even come home we were having some friends stay for the weekend and so our, our place was kind of like the the post-game spot after the friday and saturday night of the concert so we were hanging out until like super late at night slash early in the morning um doing drugs and like it was a great time but by like sunday i also felt like my body had become a bit numb to it and if I wanted to get those same effects, I'd have to do way more. And at that point, I'm like, I don't want to do that much. Like that yeah. gets a little bit more in like the like dangerous or like potential for addiction territory. And it just made me realize I'm like, the reason that I enjoy these substances as much as they as I do is because I'm not doing them often, at least not often enough to like feel like I'm like chasing like another high or another high. 
like even taking a break of a week or a couple of weeks in between a lot of these substances will make it infrequent enough to where you can pretty easily get that same sensation from the first bit. Like I know if I don't do like Coke or 2C for a couple of weeks, even just like a small bump, I, I will feel like a decent amount and I will be pretty satisfied with that. Uh, as opposed to doing it days at a time and having to dramatically increase the doses of whatever I'm taking to get even like remotely close to the same feeling. And so there is, um, there's a lot of like benefits obviously in moderation, but even just like the experiences that you get uh, from that are, are what keep it like special and, and fun. So I will say that I definitely enjoy doing drugs in like small amounts less often because it's almost like I wouldn't say it's like the, you feel like you took it the fir- for the first time again, but it's kind of a lot more close to that feeling of like when you took it for the first time and you get a lot more of the euphoria or like the feeling without damaging your body as much or feeling like a crackhead or something like that, especially when it comes to stuff like Coke, because I've seen people definitely be tweakers on that shit. And it's just like, you don't want to be a tweaker. No one likes a tweaker. No, definitely not. And, and doing them, less frequently just makes it feel more like special and and fun when you are doing those drugs. And ultimately, like, I think the goal of doing any of these substances is to feel a different way within your own body and your own brain and to either have fun with that or actually get something out of that experience. And you're not going to be getting things out of those experiences if you're trying to get like coked up, like on back to back days or or going too hard on, on really any substance. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would say uh, other things to keep in mind with festivals, concerts, stuff like that. Um, it, it's pretty common for people to just like hand out and give out drugs during festivals. Like if you just meet people, they might offer or you can buy off other people. Obviously, that is an option, but you know, we will always advise you to bring your own drugs that you have tested prior. Um, that you know exactly what's in it and what you're getting as opposed to buying off of random people because who knows where they got their drugs or or what's in them and as far as like getting drugs into festivals it's really not that hard Uh, i've seen people slide into like their socks or their shoes uh this time since i was bringing like what's up or their underwear if they're like really exactly yeah Uh, yeah i was gonna say like this time since i was bringing like one Ziploc bag, but pretty comprehensively stocked with a lot of different substances. I just stuffed it in my underwear. You go through security, literally, like, you will be fine. Like, I don't think you will ever get caught doing that. Um, yeah, of and course, some places put, are like, chill about metal it. Metal or I, something in there. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, some places yeah, are... I, I was kind of surprised by how chill some places were. Like, uh, when I was in Ibiza and I went to go see this one artist, I had... I was coming... I was going between concerts. There was one concert with a really big artist. And then after that, there was another concert across the street. When I went to the other one across the street, I forgot to put my Molly away and it was just in my like shirt pocket. And they obviously saw it was so obvious. And I was like very visibly fucked up already. And they just took it and they're like, do you have anything else? And I was like, no. And they're like, okay, cool. And they just let me in. I was like, what? (laughs) Ibiza's chill. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say that might be specific to Ibiza because if they turned away everyone who they found with drugs, they wouldn't make any money. Yeah, no, that's true, actually. A lot of people are doing drugs. Yeah, there. yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I would say the other thing with music festivals is uh, it's especially easy to get like dehydrated, to get tired. Uh, and so make sure like first step when you get into a festival uh, even if you're not taking drugs is like find where the water station is, fill up your water bottles. Uh, a lot of people have like the small camelback backpacks. If you are going to do drugs, I highly recommend those because just having the water hose really easily accessible, like next to your mouth really goes a long way in making sure that you stay hydrated and you don't get lightheaded and like end up passing out from something just like, like heat or being in a crowd, which can definitely happen. Be very surprised how often that happens. And then for a lot of rave venues, they'll usually have a couple of big like water dispensers or like Gatorade coolers around the venue, at least if they're like a solid venue that knows what they're doing. And so it's good to just like know where those are. Usually they'll have a stack of cups next to it as well. And so just setting that as kind of like 
a mental waypoint for whenever you're thirsty or if you need something to like I don't know, take your mind off of maybe you're feeling a little bit nauseous coming up on a drug just walk over get some water bring back a cup or two for your for your group but yeah that being said the other piece of advice and we always reiterate this is make sure to know your limits when it comes to these drugs or even if you're not doing drugs just know your physical limits at these festivals if you're at a festival those things can seriously take a toll on you if you're standing around especially if you're in like a mosh pit or something like that it'll get pretty physical you'll get pretty exhausted pretty quickly you know relative to sitting down or something yeah and it's also definitely good to do these things with a group like just have people there Um, if they're on the same drugs as you then great then you know you won't feel like you're alone in whatever you're feeling um, and you'll also be able to like gauge where other people are at and you know like how the drugs are are hitting you and then with a bigger group especially if people are doing their own separate drugs it is super important that you're aware of just what drugs everyone is doing so actually something that my girlfriend did before we went to this festival this past weekend is she literally sent out a google form to everyone in in our big group that was mostly to figure out like what artists everyone wanted to see because there's a bunch of artists that play at the same time just figuring out like where we could go as a group where maybe people wanted to split off but also part of the forum was like what drugs will you be taking this weekend and i think that was a really good idea to just make sure that we're in tune with what everybody is on um you know knowing vaguely like when they took what drug and making sure that you know we're able to keep an eye on each other and just watch each other's backs um, just because ultimately idea. these experiences like it is good to have people looking out for each other and also like the people you'll meet at these raves at these concerts these festivals are usually like really nice like there is a strong culture of people just looking out for each other like if you look like you're not doing okay like people are generally very like supportive they offer to get you water um, i know like there were a couple times where we were in the crowd this weekend and people would like pass out or fall down i think mostly from like heat exhaustion uh, because it was quite hot and and crowded uh and as soon as that happens like obviously everyone makes a big circle like people are there to provide water and and help um and people generally take good care of each other but it's always good to have uh, a group that's dialed in to what you're doing and vice versa no definitely and i would recommend the buddy system if you're not going with like a significant other or something because you should just always have at least one other person that you're looking out for them they're looking out for you especially if you're on drugs always a good idea i've i've actually heard of stories like from close friends of mine where they didn't really think it through they went to the, these festivals and they took like a ton of psychedelics and then they lost everyone in their group and they were just like freaking out and then the music starts getting intense and there's like what's going on like it's happened to actually more than one of my friends which is kind of crazy like one of them i had to like go over there and like get them myself like just to make sure they were okay but yeah, definitely have at least one person that, you know, is looking out for you. You're looking out for them. It's highly, highly recommended, especially on psychedelics. Yeah, I, I would say psychedelics are definitely what will take you the most out of just your element and like knowing where you are. And that can definitely be the the scariest. So I, I will say when you're doing psychedelics at concerts and experiences like that, um, do just take a little bit of extra precaution with um, just with like planning like how you're going to get back things like that and even when you enter the venue if you're with a group it's good to just establish like a meeting point like hey by like this light or like this random poster like that can be our meeting point if anyone gets lost and then it's super easy to just send a text or give a call and be like hey i'm at the meeting point and the final thing i want to mention especially about festivals is most people don't realize that like there's very bad reception anytime there's a big music festival because there's just so many people so close together on their phones and it just like jams up the the phone lines essentially so it can be really tough to get texts through and and calls so in those cases it's especially important to communicate meeting points where if people get lost um, if you are splitting up for different shows just establishing like what time meeting exactly where and then even things as simple as like really taking a mental picture of what someone else is wearing that it's a little bit easier for you to pick them out of a crowd. Uh, That should save you most trouble of just not being able to find people and and not contacting them. uh, If like your texts aren't going through. Yeah, that's great advice. Uh, Going back to the, uh, 
taking drugs from random people at concerts. I mean, we've all done it. Like, I mean, maybe not, but I've definitely done it no, a few we, times. We, yeah. Sometimes we, it worked we, out. We definitely have. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it worked out. Sometimes it didn't really work out. But funny story. I was watching this other podcast and uh, the guy who wrote the song, I took a pill in Ibiza. Apparently the song was actually written about when he was in Ibiza and then some random guy recognized him and gave him like this pill. And then he took it. And the next day he like literally felt like total garbage, which is a lesson in and of itself. Like be careful if you're taking things from random people, you don't even know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, on the other side of that coin at this music festival this past weekend, we met these like random people. I don't know. They looked like they were college student age or something. And they were just like, dude, do you have any drugs? Like we'll literally pay you like hundreds of dollars for like any drugs you have. Uh, and at that point, if you have extras and especially if you've tested it, like I, I did feel comfortable enough to give them some drugs and I did charge them that much. Cause that felt like a dick move. I was like, literally I'll give you like 50 bucks worth of drugs for like $60. Like that, that is super chill to me. Um, and they had a great time and we made some good friends from that experience. So honestly, like exchanging drugs like that, especially in a setting like a music festival where people like really want it, uh, can be, uh, a good way to like make friends and meet people and like at any of these experiences especially when we were waiting for a show to start and we're just like sitting down in the field in front of the stage uh, pretty much anyone who's like at the front of one of these concerts they've probably had experiences with drugs and so it can just be like a, a good opening question like oh like are you taking anything today like how are you feeling like how's your experience been um that that's a really great way to like start a conversation and break a barrier and just you know also show that like Hey, you're you're also doing drugs and, and you're cool like that <laughs> essentially and if they're not on drugs then all they're gonna say is like nah, I'm, I'm not taking anything yeah it's not a big deal I, I will say that if you're getting drugs from someone that you just met at a festival if you're paying them for it it's more likely to be legit than if they're just giving it to you from my experience my personal experience i can't vouch for like for anyone else but uh usually like if you're the one asking to buy it from them or and the, you know that they're taking it then like you're probably more likely to get something that's better than like a random person like giving you something or offering you something like that's might be a little bit sketch unless you've developed some kind of relationship with them and i will say that sometimes at these things you can kind of like see who's a plug almost and other people will tell you like in before like I know, at least in my experience other people will tell you before you even ask them like oh yeah dude that guy's legit or that guy has the best molly or whatever it is you know i, I totally agree like if someone's going around like trying to actively sell drugs like may, may, maybe exercise a little bit of caution uh, also just remember this literally when we were leaving the festival like walking through like the streets of the city there are these random guys selling like just fun balloons but they're literally just selling like, whippets on the <laughs> streets i'm like yeah, well, we haven't talked about whippets yet on on this podcast. We can talk about that as a topic on another episode. But my hard and fast rule for whippets is just don't do it. They're not worth it. Um, definitely, I'm not a little more relaxed on the whippets. I'd say like for me, it's like a once a year thing. Like don't go too hard with it. But I have a little fun with it. I will admit it's not healthy and it's not something I'd ever really recommend. It is. It is the most consistent way to lose significant amounts of brain cells from from a drug like you yeah can honestly do don't do it <laughs> honestly i yeah. yeah that was yeah honestly just don't do it it's really not worth it and if you are gonna do it don't fucking do it out of a balloon like that's actually a terrible way to do a whip it's like do it out of like a whipped cream maker or something i, I did it once and it was it was pretty dumb like <laughs> definitely a bottom tier drug in <laughs> dude did you i was gonna ask did you k-hole at the festival no, I didn't take enough to go like that deep during the festival, mostly because I knew I didn't want to go that ham. But it was it was a really nice, like consistent feeling when like just I wanted to feel something or like we still have like 30 or 45 minutes before an artist starts and we're just sitting down and chilling. Uh, it, it was nice. Like I, I'm fairly new to ketamine and I've only taken it by itself like once or twice now. So it's definitely a drug that I'm like experimenting more, I'd say in these like coming weeks and months. But I, I've been enjoying it. And especially that night when we were just at home chilling, like it was so nice, just like <laughs> cuddling up with myself, like oh, in a nice, awesome. like soft hoodie um, and just kind of being like zonked out and like watching planet earth. Like it was sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Man, I will say my first time doing ketamine was at a concert. Uh, and I was on two points of Molly and the guy next to me was doing some and he, he just offered it to me just like, cause we were, we kind of had built like a, a small little community in the area that we were all standing slash sitting. Um, and so I was like, yeah, man, do you want some? Like we're all doing it, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And I was like, do you have any I could buy off you? And he's like, oh, I only got gram bags. And so I bought this gram bag off him for like, I think it was like $80 or something. Like that's not too bad. Yeah, it really wasn't. And <laughs> I did the entire bag by myself. Oh my god. <laughs> and I K-holed at this concert and I like I definitely don't recommend it to like someone who's like not really experienced with drugs or like isn't comfortable like just kind of being almost paralyzed, I guess. But yeah. for me, it's like given the context of that specific concert where there was a lot of room for you to like kind of walk around and sit down, it was kind of like a it was kind of like a tiered um, seating arrangement or standing arrangement. It was amazing, man. Just like between the Molly and the K hole, I was just, I was just, I felt like I was the music, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds like a solid experience, honestly, especially if you have like a place to just like sit. And, yeah. Like, vibe yeah. So, and it, it was, yeah. it was bad because uh, I was with one of my friends and she ended up, I, she ended up having to actually like hold up the spoon for me. Because I was, I had done so much and I couldn't do any more, but I wanted to do more for some reason. And so I'm like, hey, can you hold up the spoon? She's like, yeah, yeah, I got you. And I just snorted <laughs> it off of the spoon she was holding. I was like, don't recommend doing that, honestly. I don't know what I was thinking, but great time. All right, y'all. Well, this has been uh, our conversation about drugs and music festivals. Uh, that's the pod. Thanks for listening. Truly. Thank you for listening to the show. We seriously fucking appreciate it. If you want to help us out, just leaving a rating or a comment, you know, the drill would be incredibly helpful. But more importantly, share the knowledge and the love with your friends. Make sure they're getting the information they need on this topic that is so underserved and underappreciated in today's society. We'll see you all next week.